Welcome back everybody to my devlog series where I'm making an N64 slash PS1 inspired adventure game in the Unreal Engine. Last time we got our character moving and we built ourselves a little prototype level to kind of gauge the aesthetic that we're going for in this game. But now it's really time to focus on a lot of the nitty gritty of the traversal mechanics and moving around this world and things like that. And the first thing we're going to do is figure out climbable surfaces. Not free climbable surfaces, we'll do that in the next devlog. These are specifically going to be ledges that you can climb up onto within your height range. This will be used on things like movable blocks, which we're also going to look at later in this devlog, but also just areas of the environment where it's just above your head, you can reach up to, you can grab it, and you can pull yourself up to. That's the main focus. Let's uh, move over to past map where I'm going to explain that a little bit better with our trusty friend, Paint. Here it is. It's me, past Matt, once again. So, this is the start of Devlog 3. I've probably just introduced it and stuff. So here's our player. We're running around our level. We've got, let's, let me just put like a black ground plane in. So this is the ground. So what I want to do today is figure out a way of this character, this player character moving forward like this. And then as they approach this, either they touch the wall or they're running into the wall for a certain amount of time or something like that there'll be a line trace that will then check to see if there is a surface to climb up onto within a range or above the player character character is running along gets to the wall comes up here clambers up so move up clamber later in this devlog i'm hoping as well we will be able to create some sort of pushable block. For example, we have this happening already. So we've, let me just copy this down here. So as you can see, these two checks right here, they, they are pinging basically. So this red line right here, this, this red line right here, and this red line right here can't find a, a suitable climbable surface. This isn't suitable to climb on. And then the player character could come over here. Do, 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 come over here and then push the block in this direction like this. The player character would then be able to jump up onto here like clamber up onto this surface and then do it again into this surface and clamber up here and then it'd be stood on top of here. I want to be able to design levels like that to have elements of puzzle. You know, puzzle elements added in and being able to think about the gameplay elements within some of the more dungeony areas you go into because right now we've only designed the coral forest that we did last time which is a very organic outside area these in the game are going to refer be referred to as exploration areas there'll be a mix of general exploration within the levels there'll be little hidden things things to collect maybe you'll have to do a certain number of things and then you'll be able to unlock another area or something like that that's the main area main idea for these natural outdoor areas there will be more puzzle and combat focused dungeons there'll be combat out in the open world as well mostly with creatures more about the main enemies in a future devlog you'll have like semi-open world areas like this that are like connected by little either loading areas or you know some sort of tunnel that you know deloads the area before as you pass through it something like that you know, a little bit like you could see in Lost Woods in Zelda or the transition screens in Zelda when you go to different areas and stuff. And then there will also be some sort of larger dungeon. So maybe if you've collected like a key from here, a key from here, and a key from here, it then unlocks some sort of big dungeon or something here that requires three keys. You can then go in here and then this is the place where you do your puzzle, your combat, you, you've got your bosses and all of that sort of stuff. Hopefully it all makes sense. Let's jump in Unreal Engine and actually try to start implementing some of this. Okay, there was a lot of me talking about the gameplay loop and the gameplay systems that I could out then because I realized that I'd been talking for way over six minutes. So hopefully some of that made sense. What I'll do is I'll record a more in-depth idea of my gameplay loop and systems for the start of Devlog 4, and I'll, I'll kind of go into that a little bit more detail. But first, let's look into 
getting this climbing system working and of course we need animations and we need a ton of other stuff adding in here so we can start making this work. The, the main section what we're doing now is we're just going to implement our climbing system and start building that out so I just thought I would show some of the recording of this and in a little bit I'll actually walk through this and talk through this a little bit more but past Matt did that this is current Matt and we're just speeding through all of this but you can just see how I'm just trying to figure things out this was a fairly lengthy process to get climbing working how I wanted it to especially as this is kind of a ledge grab sort of system rather than normal climbing but I ended up using sphere traces or capsule traces rather than um line traces which helped me kind of get a better range on what I was needing and like if it was hitting two different points but you can see here you know I, I can see that the the one shooting out in front of me is, is accepting a, a ping and then the one above shooting down is also getting that return ping those two little green spheres that are returning which is really useful that's exactly what we want so I, I keep tweaking the system until I'm pretty happy with it and I it's really important that this is right because it's going to be used quite a lot from climbing up on blocks to having little ledges in front of us that we're going to climb up and things like that. I ended up um, adding a socket here to the pelvis which will let me kind of hang the player at a point and I'll use that socket to teleport the player to that placement and then hold them at that hanging position which is, is kind of pretty much exactly what we need to to achieve this this ledge grabbing system i ended up adding a bunch of events i ended up doing a lot of stuff here that i deleted i made kind of a mess in a lot of places with the blueprint just trying a lot of things and then i reverted some of it tweaked some of it back the other way and back and forth and back and forth and you can see some of that here where i'm just kind of like undoing things and trying and adding things and things like that but here it's pretty much working now we can jump down we can hold into the wall and we'll move up to that position and then if you imagine the character holding their arms up and we're going to implement some of that and uh, yeah keep tweaking away here in the uh, nerd graph and everything and see how we can make it work because I had a lot of trouble making it sync up and actually the root motion caused a lot of trouble as well. I don't really want to go into an insane amount of detail with it. But let's just say I didn't build my character with root motion in mind. So adding root motion to it caused some difficulties. Well, let's just say that. But anyway, it works. It functions. We have the character moving up. And, you know, it's it's locking into place. And it's doing it after a collision for a certain amount of time. Okay, this is past Matt. Just tuning in to talk about how I've managed to make this work. I'm not a big fan of the delay node. But I've made this work because of that. So basically what's happening here is if it's checking, basically it's going down here and it's checking is overlapping, which is right here, which is the out value of this. And if this overlaps, and then it overlaps for 0.5 seconds, it will then move on and check if there's a movement axis happening. And if there's movement axis happening and the overlapping is happening, it will then jump forward. I think I'm just going to have this in the forward axis, but right now just for testing I've got it going to both. And then it will make the, the character jump. And then, if that is all true, it will set us to hang. So, with all that in mind, I haven't implemented the actual, uh, like, the, the actual animation yet. But as you can see, I'm just stood here. I'm overlapping. See, there's a little bit of weirdness, which is why I'm going to fix where it has to be the forward vector. Because, basically, if this is overlapping for long enough it'll climb but right now it's a bit of a mess it's a little bit of a mess but it will get there and basically as a straight up test if I just walk against this nothing if I hold W it'll do it so you have to be moving forward like pressing against that surface and like I said there's some bugs right now as you just saw if I'm looking at the wrong if I'm moving at this like a wrong way or something like that you see it doesn't quite work how you'd want it to so you have to kind of be looking at it dead on but overall, I'm pretty happy with this as a first pass to get just the feature implementation working. Okay, so at this point, as I just talked about before we went to pass map, I start implementing animations for the grab and being able to pull ourselves up. 
we are using root motion at the core to do a lot of that and we're driving it with a little bit of a move component as well to make it all work and come together in some sort of harmony and it, it took a long time to tweak it to the point where I was happy with it but it does get there and I, I do think that the, the final result is, is, is pretty good it's pretty usable so I just it, create a couple of inputs so that um, when I'm doing things I can trigger those uh, animations to happen so uh, as well as like climbing up and climbing down all of that can be triggered um, by two different commands now so if you press down and whatever your down movement key is it's the same it will hop you off and if you're pressing the up key or the forward key or the joystick or whatever you're going to use that will pull you up and that's pretty much it we have the system in place now and it's working we have the animations working and everything is coming together i say everything a lot because i'm pretty happy with how this turned out it took a little while there was a lot of back and forth and going back into the blueprints and tweaking things a little bit but i'm pretty happy with it okay i'm just going to record a little progress update to kind of talk where i got to and uh how it's working and everything because you know i made pretty good progress last night so the first long sphere trace that you see coming out of my characters like hip area you see as soon as that collides that means it knows that it's it's hitting something and then what the one going above is doing is checking height so right now they're both green but you see there's now a third one that spawned around my character like in the middle that's to collide so i have to be walking into this wall for that to turn green it's like oh good that's all correct thumbs up so now if i walk into the wall i can jump and i can climb up and i'm up here now same thing happens if I want to do a climb down. So if I'm on the ledge, I can just go press down. I jump off. Animations still aren't great for this. But hey, the system works better than I thought it would, actually. One of the things I want to try to fix is if you see like I'm sliding around and there's like jump start happening and th there needs to be more of a delay between the checks. Like, if I start walking into it, look, I'm sliding. All I'm doing is holding one direction, but I'm sliding around. And then if I hold down, there needs to be more of a check or more of a delay of a check. So I'm going to work on that. So there's some progress. We at least have a climbing system. Like, this could be the early implementation of it. But we also have things like this, which I think I'm going to fix with, like, a collision tag so that I can select which objects I want you to be able to climb. For example, I don't want you to be able to climb this, but I do want you to be able to climb this. There we go, look at that. And there's a, a lovely little bug. Just strolling around. And after having all that fun with climbing and figuring that out, I decide to tackle rolling. I just thought, you know, I've spent so much time just getting the implementation of climbing working. Let's switch things up a little bit. And let's um, let's have a little play around and see if we can get you know our character rolling around, picking up a little bit of speed. I think you know a lot of people think quite fondly of being able to roll around in games like Zelda, so I thought let's add that in. It was a pretty simple system. I had created a couple of inputs and just created a couple of you know triggers to play when when I wanted certain things to happen, and. That's pretty much it. I added a little bit of root motion to make sure that the character moves in, in a way that doesn't look like it's sliding along the floor or anything like that. A lot of testing, a lot of running around, as you can see, to make it work, but and, uh, you know, got to test these things out. But I also started looking back at the climbing system and seeing if I can get a way to lock the player's rotation to the surface you're about to climb. But here we are in engine. You can see me rolling around, testing it out, and it's all looking pretty good. There's obviously some bugs that are going to be caused with this, triggering with uh, other things, but overall pretty good. You can see now, when I was climbing then, the player snaps to that surface, and I don't do it in this, but in a future clip you'll see me snapping, slowing the characters of velocity town when they snap to that surface as well. So, as long as you're moving towards that surface um, for a certain period of time, and it sees that collision, it'll slow you down so you're not sliding around it so much. But as you can see, I'm just testing things out here in Engine, making sure it's all working. 
and it is it's working pretty good i'm happy with how everything works the roll works pretty well i'm just trying to see if i can make it glitch out by rolling while i'm jumping and stuff and uh, sometimes it does sometimes it does but pretty happy with how the implementation of that has worked out now what i really wanted to do is i wanted to make sure you you could pull and push on this block and swap between those so the main systems here is you get near the block you hold a button or a key down it will snap you to a point and then you can push it forward it will automatically start pushing it forward as long as you're holding down the button to push actually but if you push backwards so s or back on the analog stick you'll pull start pulling the block and then if you move forward again it'll start moving it and if you let go of the button pressed you'll then let go of you know being able to do anything at all and to do this i had to use a component and link that component between the player character the input controls and the blueprint for this pushable block that i'm building it ended up working pretty well i had to build the component anyway for the pushing system but adding the the pulling system as well seemed pretty easy in the long run and, and that was something that worked quite nicely i built as much of this as possible as a robust blueprint that i could edit and tweak and actually now at the time of recording this i've built multiple versions of this blueprint that have different collisions depending on where i'm pushing the block and how i want it to be used in puzzles for example there's one way you can push it from only one side and this version that we're building here is this is a version that's pushable from two sides and when we start making a model that we push around and it's a block that we use and it has textures on i think i'm going to have colors represent which sides are actually going to be usable but let me pass you all over to past matt who's going to talk about where we're at with this system before we start adding animations uh, so if i click on here you move the box forward and you can press it again and you'll stop and you can see right here that i can't climb this at all like, i can't climb this big block but i could climb this little one but that other one's out of my height range so now i've pushed this block over i can climb up onto this block and i can climb up onto here and now i'm all the way at the top of this really big double block but you know again i can come onto here and i can push this block out of the way and there we go now I can't do shit. I can't, I can only just climb this. I can't get back up here. I can only climb back onto this and then do that. I'm actually controlling this with mouse and keyboard, but again, I've done a little bunch of stuff like this as well. So you can't climb anything unless it's within a specified height range, both in height low wise and up, up wise. That doesn't make any sense. So like, I can't climb this one, but I can climb this one. Here we go progress and yeah i can come over to here and i can push this back the other way if i wanted to ignore all the all the dev text over my screen right now i'm just doing that and then there we go we've pushed it back we'll climb up onto here climb up onto here and there we go now i need to start plugging animations into that but hey progress so now that's done and we have our messy blueprint we're gonna start plugging in animations i'm gonna make these into a blend space and then add them into our main character's locomotion so that we can trigger for when we're pushing and when we're pulling and when we're doing nothing and blend that all together these are pretty rough animations as well they don't they don't work exactly yet but again at this point i'm just adding them in so that we have a way to visualize these things nicely and it's not just the character stood in like an idle state or a walking state we can actually do that and you can see already I got those implemented pretty fast and uh, it's working pretty nicely, which I'm happy with. There is a push, there is a pull, there is a lot of struggle and effort used by the, in the animation for the, both of those, and that's very much inspired by Ocarina of Time. Especially, weirdly, Young Link is doing a lot of heavy pushing and, and pulling on those blocks, and I, I looked at his animation a lot and made sure we got something similar with what we're going for here. Okay, quick little update. So I've now got it so that I can come in here, I can push the block, and I can pull the block. Whenever you choose to enter pushing block state, you'll always start pushing it. But you can always press S on the keyboard or back on the left analog stick. And you'll just, uh, yeah, go back and you can swap back whenever you want as well. And you can keep pushing this. It has a pretty large collision volume on the direction you're pushing. That's so that the character if you're pulling it doesn't collide into it and also you don't end up pushing it into a wall so you'll see over here that's as far as we can push it 
that so that we can still walk around here and start pushing it this way again. But if we decide to pull this back the other way, it'll still collide right here. And you can, you can still climb up it. And we can re-enter the pushing stage and push it back the other way. If we want to. I think it's working pretty well. Pull it this way. And there we go, look. It works beautifully. Beautifully. And there we go, that's pretty much everything with the block done. I added some quick UI, just so you can see. You have to, this is using controller buttons here, but you hold X down to start pushing it, and then if you release that, you'll either stop pulling or pushing it right there, and then you can climb up. And that's it. Functional, working, pushable block that's climbable. So now we're going to look at swimming. Swimming is a whole different kettle of fish than anything I've done before. It has to be triggerable within a very specific area on a very specific surface and then it has to feel a certain way as well and that isn't easy so with swimming what i decided to do was use the surface as a trigger point for the player so if you if the player is known to be touching a surface that is detected as water it will then start playing animations i ended up swapping this around a little bit so that we were using kind of an altered version of the water plugin so that you then also get applied the physics volume of swimming as soon as you touch that surface. It took a lot of time actually and I'm cutting out probably about four hours of tinkering, testing, moving things around to get it to work. Here you can see me adding the blend spaces for swimming. There's a additional animation I added which is a plunge animation so that when you touch the surface to begin with you plunge under and then come to the surface and then you're at that surface height and you can swim around you can climb out and do all of that but a lot of that here was done it, a lot of that was done so much later it just didn't work initially and you'll see me just having so much trouble getting this to work for example we're just swimming in the air just above the surface, even though I had set the system to push you under the waves or, you know, push the player character down, just sometimes because of collision and stuff, it just wouldn't. Here I am just having a little swim on the land, as you do. But it's useful, I think, to show this. I don't just want these devlog series videos to be, oh, look, here's the polished, perfect thing. I want to show the negatives and the, the bugs and the glitches that you have to fix. Because here's a really good example of why I ended up switching systems was my auto jump system wasn't working because it was triggering that the character was stepping on water before it was triggering any sort of detection for the auto jump system. And we spent so long on that auto jump system in the previous devlog that I really wanted to make sure that was implemented and, and was a feature that could work. I wanted to be able to have platforms that you could jump across, you know, bodies of water and stuff. We, we should be able to have that. Anyway, as you can see, through the time lapse of hours passing pretty much uh, in the background here, there was a lot of stuff that I tinkered with. There was a lot of stuff that just didn't go well. I ended up delete deleting a lot of stuff. I ended up swapping the water system, like I mentioned, to a completely different one. And using a different implementation of what I was originally going for. I ended up rewriting a lot of the swimming. Uh, I probably watched three different videos and read four or five different approaches of how to do water. I tried three of them and I ended up going with the last one with a little bit of some stuff from the first one. The second one dropped me a lot into the water and didn't quite rise me back to the surface a lot. I don't really want to be doing underwater stuff. That's not really a feature the game will require at any point. There's not gonna be like iron boots like in Zelda. You're not gonna be going into a water temple and stuff like that. There will be some areas that include water and there'll be some you know more damp water water filled areas but that doesn't necessarily mean that I want them to be you know areas where you can swim under or dive under or anything like that it's just not something I'm looking to implement in the game I'm not the biggest fan of water levels anyway but water itself I think can be great and looks 
amazing. Um, a little while ago, you probably saw me in Blender tweaking a few things and trying to import a water, like, cuboid rather than just a plane. That was me trying to create the physics volume stuff. I ended up just swapping over to the, the water plugin, like I mentioned. It was really useful and it had that custom water plane where I can just put the texture on and then it generated the physics volume below that. So adding all of that with my post-processing volume and all of that worked great. So if the camera's ever under the water, perfect. So here was some of my early implementations of what ended up being my final system. Other than the walking into the water thing, you can see here as I'm swimming around, works pretty well, uh, barring the very janky animations right now. But whenever I came up against a surface, I would start walking. And that wasn't great. One of my solutions to this was just to make all the surfaces harsh angles and not have any sort of slope on them. Uh, I ended up doing that, but I might revert some of those changes anyway, we'll see. And you can see even here, the player character can't get out of the water. This is still an issue even at the end of this. We can't exit the water in a way I'm happy with yet, but we can climb out on climbable surfaces, so there is at least a way out. I'm edging my way out here with uh, the jump button, which is also something the player won't have access to. But it, this is a pretty strange bug because of the way I implemented it. But once we're in the water, and there we go, we're swimming around, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. So it's all about now refining this and actually trying to figure out why this is happening like it is and to stop the, the system where it can't climb. After many hours, this is where I got to. You can see the plunge animation into the water. We're now swimming around and we can come up to a surface here and we can climb out of it. We can jump over the, the water absolutely fine and we can jump back over here. It works great. I'm very, very happy with that. Now, we're gonna do something very different. We've just finished that, and I was like, I'm done with dealing with swimming and looking at blueprints for a while. This has been a very long devlog already. We're almost at half an hour. Let's look at creating a exterior dungeon aesthetic for our planets. We're gonna come across these alien relics, these alien ruins, and we're going to need to gain access to them at some point. But I kind of wanted to just explore the ideas I had in my head and see if they work actually making these things in Blender. We've been spending so much time in Unreal for the last two devlogs, I thought it was time we, you know, built something new and did something a little bit creative. As you can see, I'm kind of going for this diamond geometric shape design. This helps with triangle counts, keeping it kind of looking low poly and everything. But also, it's quite alien, it's going to be very angular, and the worlds that these are going to be placed in are going to be so organic and colourful that I want to do something very grey, but also have these sort of neon lights strewn throughout to kind of draw your attention. So that's kind of my goal, I've been drawing some textures for this, you can see me applying them here. And I really wanted to make these big and daunting and huge structures, so I had this idea of having cubes stacked on top of each other but each one is rotated 45 degrees it may end up looking like something out of minecraft i i don't know but hopefully not when um, all things are said and done and you see it in the world i hope it does look like this big sort of colossal daunting structure in the world and yeah this was a lot of fun i ended up doing a lot of little tricks where i'm reusing parts of textures as little rims and little uh, trims and all this sort of stuff along along these different things and I wanted this to be a ruin, you know, this is something that's going to be hundreds of thousands of years old. So I wanted to, you know, break some things down and have some things doing different things. I end up having some of these blocks hanging from chains from the ceiling and a lot of different things that you wouldn't see in this very sci-fi but alien world. I wanted to make this look quite different to uh, what we'd normally see in a game like this and also in the rest of the game in general. I wanted these to be very unique standout things. The other thing you'll notice is all the textures are currently very high res. It's just because I drew them much higher res just for ease. And then I scaled them down later to 32 by 64 or 64 by 64. I'm very much sticking to that low end of the pixel counts that you see on for textures on the N64. I think there are some games that might have gone up to 128 in their texture sizes, but... 
I don't know if I will yet. Everything I've done so far has managed to look pretty good at 64 by 32 or 64 by 64. But I haven't scaled those down yet at this point. A lot of this is just me exploring these ideas I have in my head and seeing what works and what doesn't. But I, I am really, really happy with how this turned out. And it set a really great precedent now for how these alien structures are going to look. And as you can see, this is kind of an idea of how one of these could look in game it gives a really unique vibe i think and right now you're probably thinking well this looks like nothing else you've shown us but at some point this will be in game and you'll see our alien character running around this world and this uh, creation and here it is a little bit more polished up we have some of that red moss and ivy growth that you see on the in the coral forest growing on this we've got some green moss on the on the bottom growing everywhere and like i said we have a couple of those pillars now hanging um, from chains and the neon green is in there so this planet's going to have green for its dungeon as its main uh, accent color but the other dungeons on the other planets will have different ones even though they'll all be based on a similar aesthetic to this they'll all look a little bit different and this one's going to have a little bit of you know coral growth and um, erosion I guess from maybe a nice way because this is all based on a in this huge sort of old seabed so that'll be really cool and yeah, I ended up just tinkering around with this and animating the door a few different ways. I ended up liking this one the most where it spins and then slides open. I think this is probably something I'll use. But it's just nice to be able to have a break from all of the Unreal Engine blueprints and everything and come and create something like this. We probably won't bring it in game for a little while yet, but I think uh, that was a lot of fun. And yeah, I had a great time building that out. Hopefully you all like it. I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think to our first sort of dungeon exterior aesthetic and where i'm taking the direction of that I'd love to hear what you all think on that so next time in devlog 4 i'm going to do a deeper dive on the gameplay loop and the gameplay system so you kind of get an idea of what the main gameplay loop of the game is going to be and then we're going to add two really cool features they are going to be jump pads so we can propel the player to different areas higher ledges and stuff like that and then we're going to add free climbable surfaces right now you can just climb a singular surface like grab a ledge but I want to have some walls maybe they're going to be covered in vines or something where you can freely climb up and down them left and right and go to different areas and things like that and I think that's going to be a fun devlog I realize that this has been a super long one and the last two devlogs have also been super long so I'm going to try to streamline the amount of features I show in a single devlog now and try to cut these down to somewhere south of 20 minutes I really don't want all of these to end up being 30 minute long experiences if we want to call it that but that's what's going to be next time hopefully you all look forward to that and yeah thanks so much for watching and i'll see you all next time goodbye